to this performance that is brought to you by Plymouth Public Library. Um, we have played, it's one of our favorite places to play, and unfortunately this year we won't be able to do that in person. So we are on the schedule as a video performance, and we hope that you will enjoy this next hour of a lot of traditional and fall-themed tunes. Uh, we are Silver Strings Dulcimer Society. So the tunes we played were Whiskey Before Breakfast and uh, Mississippi Sawyer. It was a medley of some uh, common fiddle tunes that you will hear in this type of music all across the United States. The next tune we're going to play is called Over the Waterfall, and it has a story about it, um, like a lot of traditional music does. There's a ballad, and oftentimes the words were written far after the tune. And the story that goes with this tune, it's about an older couple and a woman who is kind of tired of taking care of her husband and decided um, she's just going to shove him over the waterfall. But in trying to do so, she tripped and went over herself, and he survived. So, I don't know, this tune doesn't sound sad at all, but that's the name of the tune, and that's the story, and I'm sticking to it. instruments uh, were used a lot of times uh, in prior centuries as dance bands. Uh, they didn't have DJs and all the things that we have today. They had people that brought their music and danced to it. Uh, so you had dulcimers and fiddles and bass fiddles and whatever else people had and they danced. And this next tune is a type of dance called a two-step. And in this case the name is Spanish two-step. So um, we will play that for you, and if you know how to two-step and you have somebody in your house and some space on your floor, have at it.
tune, we're talking about dancing, and the next two tunes is we're doing a medley, and the first tune is called Dancing Bear. And you'll notice a change in the flavor of it because they are uh, tunes that are in E minor. And we're uh, meddling that with another tune called Missouri. And uh, there, I hope you enjoy this.
you are of a certain age, you might remember visiting a grandmother or grandfather or grandparents somewhere, and there are many of the old homes, they had a grandfather's clock. And the grandfather's clock was a really tall clock. You had to have a high, tall hallway in order to um, accommodate that. And the smaller clocks, which there were salesmen that went across the United States selling, were smaller because the house was getting smaller at that time, unlike today. And they were called grandmother's clocks. But the tune we're going to play, and you might know the words to it, it's called Grandfather's Clock. It was written in the early 1900s. This is the season where everybody loves to head to the cider mills, some of which are not open this year. But red apples and cider go with fall here, and of course, don't forget the donuts. But the next tune we're going to play is called Red Apple Rag, and it's a nice, peppy little tune. And uh, I'm having an equipment malfunction here. Now, don't you feel like you're at a real performance? <laughs> uh, all right, so Red Apple Ray.
time of year that it seems like um, uh, we're getting ready for the Thanksgiving holidays and we think about turkeys. And this next tune is uh, an old tune about a turkey. But we have a lot of turkeys, wild turkeys in Michigan, and lately we've seen them all around southeastern Michigan. They're not just in the woods anymore. In fact, last week there was one standing in the middle of Beck Road and Ann Arbor Road. And it was like, what are you cars doing here? This is my spot. And I'm not moving. And he didn't. And we all had to kind of go around him. So this is called Turkey in the Straw. shaving a haircut two bits and so Linda asked the audience what two bits was and somebody actually knew. Now if we asked anybody under the age of 20 they would have no idea. They might think it's two bite brownies <laughs> but it wasn't. Yeah. So I asked you in the audience how many of you know what two bits is. All right the next tune is also a foodie tune and it's called uh, The Flight of the Haggis. And haggis, if you don't know, is a Scottish specialty. And uh, since we've had COVID, more people have had to do more cooking at home than they have had to do in a long time, um, just because of the restrictions. But anyway, the fight of the haggis is about a man named Angus, and his wife was Anne, and she was cooking haggis. And they had it on Monday, and then they had it on Tuesday, and then they had it on Wednesday, and by Thursday, he'd had enough of it, and when it got served again, he threw it right out the window. And that became the flight of the haggis, and now they have a whole game at the Scottish Games to see how far you can throw the haggis. <laughs>
Okay, our next tune is uh, a lively toe tapper. So if you're sitting down, get your feet ready to tap, or if you feel like clapping, tap. The beginning of this tune, it has like four parts, but the first part of it sounds like another foodie tune that uh, I knew growing up called Shortening Bread. But it, this tune is actually called Black Mountain Rag, and it's a nice little toe tapping, clapping, happy tune. Do we sound different with our masks on <laughs> when we're totally masked? I don't think so. I didn't mask my, my hammers. So anyway, um, the next tune we're going to play is another story tune, and it's a Scottish tune um, called Tamlin. And Tamlin angered the gods and, and got into uh, running through the woods to save his life. So we start out slow, and it's another tune in a minor key, E minor, and we um, speed up a little time. A little time. So just picture this guy running for his life in the woods. And you know, a lot of stories about this time of year have to do with that when you're in a cemetery or the headless horseman or all of that. So just pick a story, any story, and add this tune to it.
of the woods. You know, it's like those car chases on all the action movies, only we're on foot. So the next tune we're going to play is another thing that reminds me of fall festivals. Uh, and quite often in October, they have what's called an Oktoberfest in a lot of German communities. And um, I was in Germany one time, and my son-in-law actually went to the uh, Oktoberfest in Munich, which has got like the biggest one in the whole world. This next tune is a German folk tune that's called Musi Din. Uh, and you may know it as Wooden Heart. It was recorded by Elvis Presley uh, and featured in a movie called G.I. Blues many, many years ago. I don't know what year, probably in the late 50s. So, Lucy Din. a lot of Irish music, uh, especially in March. We do, it's all a March theme, then everybody's Irish. I think we hope that it'll make us lucky. So the next tune we're going to play is a jig called Bellman's Jig, and it's, uh, um, you know, has the Irish flavor to it. Bellman's Jig.
The next tune we're going to play is actually written by um, a tunesmith here in Michigan whose name is Jenny Burke, and she's written a lot of great tunes, and uh, this one is called Black Cat Shadish. And I have found that cats love hammered dulcimers. And the people that have cats and play dulcimers too have to find a special room or keep them off. There must be something really cool in the strings. I'm not sure what that is, but I, I, everyone I know that has a cat loves music. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they do. They love. We had a we had a rescue rabbit that loved banjo music, and and last week we had a pop up jam outside, and we played a particular waltz. And honest to God, we attracted a whole flock of birds that sang in the tree, and loudly. I mean, it was loud. So enough cat and animal stories. We're going to do black cat shotish for you.
who let the cat out? <laughs> That's all I have to say. Who let that cat out? And I think there was more than one. I think so. So, um, as we have found out as we planned this performance, um, the weather's changing. And it changes about hourly. So if you look at the weather report, you cannot trust that three days from now that's going to be the weather. So we had planned this, uh, and it wasn't supposed to rain, and then it started raining, and now it looks like the sun's out. So who go figure. But what thing we can count on in Michigan? Most days, as you get to the end of October, you can have a cold, frosty morn. So the next tune we're going to be playing is called Cold Frosty Morning. This is one of the oldest tunes, actually, that we play in our repertoire. I think it was written in the 1500s. It's a polka. We haven't, I don't think we've done a polka yet. We've covered a lot of other types of dances. This one's called John Ryan's Polka, and you might remember it from the movie Titanic, as the Irishmen were down in the lower levels of the ship dancing. In this tune, we're going to feature some of our instruments. You've heard um, the concertina and some of the other tunes, but what is she's playing for this tune is called the dulciborn and, and she's right in front and you might be able to see that instrument and it's a combination of a what is it a um, slide guitar and a mount dulcimer is that right yeah, yeah. and it's so it gives a little uh, more volume to what a mountain dulcimer would play and then, um, so the second time through the tune, we're going to be featuring the fiddle. And you've heard the fiddle playing cat imitations and all sorts of things. And she's done on one end. And, yeah. and then the third time through, all these backup instruments are going to be playing. And one over here, which is an unusual instrument, is called a, a banjola. And it's a combination of a banjo and a neck and a mandolin body. And, and then over here we have a guitar. And, and so these are all backup instruments that make the hammer dulcimer sound great. 
And then the fourth time through, we're, you're going to hear this big instrument right next to me. That's the, the bass, the bass fiddle, and he's going to be featured in that one. And then after him is, back here you see this guy sitting. He's just not sitting on any ordinary box. This is a cajon box. And it makes its own special noise, and it's our percussive rhythmic instrument. And finally, you'll hear us play it all together. Um, and you can see if you can pick out the various instruments that we feature. So, Jen Ryan's polka. And she had written this tune on a scrap of paper because, you know, inspiration comes at strange times. And she was waiting for her mother to come out of, of a church. And so she had this tune in her head and she wrote the tune. And then she lost it. And she thought, oh gosh, now what was that? 
So, but as good tunes sometimes happen, and serendipity, she went back the next day and it was still laying in the floor of the parking lot. It had rained, so it was soggy and run over. <laughs> and that's sorrow, well, soggy and run over. It's a, so you just never know where the, the names of these tunes are, but it's a, it's a very lovely waltz, and um, we're going to play it for you right now. And thanking Plymouth Library for this opportunity to give a video con uh, concert and performance and you can catch it on YouTube. If you're interested in Silver Strings and what we do and what we're doing, uh, you can. we have a Facebook page and we have a um, website so you can order CDs from the website and you can check out what we're doing on Facebook. We have been doing a virtual jam on Facebook once a month, which you're welcome to tune in and watch, or you can check it out on our um, website, on our YouTube channel. And we'd love to have you check us out. And I don't know when we'll be playing in person, but I hope that we'll be back and we'll be able to come back to Plymouth Library in person sometime in the future. So, uh, all good things must come to the end, and it's interesting that this is called Hangman's Reel, because it was the end of somebody. I think it was a bad fiddle player, but I could be wrong about that. <laughs> so, Hangman's Reel is a, a peppy little fiddle tune, and there's a story that goes with it as well. And it actually is about a fiddler, and he was supposed to 
be hung, be hanged, as I was correct, to be hanged. Um, but they would stay his execution as if he could play a tune on an out-of-tune fiddle. And I never did hear if they made it or not. So you, you can choose the end of that story. So enjoy this Hangman's Reel.